Welcome to Paul's Toolbox. Today, I am going to cover making concrete look like marble. And I'm going to match these veins here. So I took some gray and black paint, mixed together and put in my clear to mimic this. And it really looks great. Now, I did not want to take away from this and have my marble look too busy. So on most of this, I have small veins. You have small veins in some of this. So that looks, that looks great, it's gonna match. On the ledge over here, I have slight veins. And then I have slight veins on the top. Right here is a wide vein, and it goes into the top, which has narrow veins. This all looks and feels exactly like, like marble. You'd never know that this was concrete and not marble if I didn't tell you. Right here we have 16 inches. I'm gonna make this 18 inches because we have the edges all the way around we're going to cover as well. And this part is 36. So we take our 36 times 18. We have 648 square inches. That's what this is. We're going to divide it by 144. Because 12 inches by 12 inches is one square foot. All right? So you're going to divide your inches into square feet. 144 it becomes 4.5 square feet. That's what we have here. Then I'll just measure my other piece out and we'll total it and we'll mix our stuff. All right, let's rock. Part A first. Remember, we're going right to the line, not past it. Right on the line. It's settled. Fifty-fifty. We're we'll gonna go up to twenty ounces. This pours out real fast, part B. So make sure you don't try to dump it like you did part A. Part A is real thick, goes out slow. These are awesome little mixers. I'll have a link in the description box, but you can pick them up at Lowe's or Depot or Menards, I'm sure. Any one of your places, uh, hardware outlets, they work great. And don't worry about the stuff sticking to it. You let it dry, it's still good as long as you don't have flakes on there. I put it on low speed, and we'll spin this puppy. I'll put it on reverse after about two minutes and then spin it in reverse for a little bit just to make sure I catch everything it pulls in a different way one thing real important and I'm, I may sound redundant if you look at my other videos but I like to cover it I use this queen underneath here because on your table if it drips off one or two days later you just pop it loose that way you can just reuse it and reuse it over on the same this queen I wipe this down with alcohol and a rag to make sure there's nothing on it and we're just going to pour this on and trowel it. I try to stay away from my edges at first. I'll get it to the edges and stop. When we do the last part, we'll roll over the edges. We just want to make sure we have this covered. Okay, you see how we troweled it all the way around? We have a notched teeth that mixes it up. We're going to come back over now with our brush and hit it. I always load my brush up. I learned this from Mike Quist with Stone Cold Countertops. Do not start with a dry brush. You can, but this is a better way to do it. And that's why I tell you this. You just go random all over. Don't be afraid to push it hard. You're mixing this up and you're forcing it into the uh, concrete or whatever surface you're working on. So you want to push on there. You don't want to just lightly touch it. I'll start hitting my sides, making sure I cover all my sides well. You're going to continually hit the sides because it is going to start flowing, especially when you heat it up and running over the sides. When it does that, you're going to have runs and drips. So you want to make sure you keep it even. See, I have some stuff on my fingers. That's why I keep a rag with acetone in it. I just wipe this down 
and I'm done. I'll keep this and put it on the side. So now we'll torch it real quick, get these bubbles out, let it flow, and I'll start with my colors. That's it. We're ready to go ahead and mix some colors up in here. I'm going to spray it right on this, or black first. And then I'm going to take some silver metallic. That'll get me with the, a lighter color that I want. I'll mix that together. I'm just going to use a pencil because I want some thin lines on here. It's a little too dark, so we'll put some more silver in there. Get some of a gray look. I'll start off right over here in the corner. And I can branch it off. That's fine. And what I'll do is I'll just take and blend that in with my heat gun and then I'll take a little bit on the other side. That's all I want. I don't want a whole lot of veins. This is going to start dispersing on its own. I'll hit on the other side and I'll come back. My veins are going one way like this. So I want them to go the same way. So I might take and shade this off a little bit. Just a little bit. Rub some in there. Put a little bit of patches. Just a little bit. Doesn't have to be much. And I'll run a little bit here. That's it. That's all I want. I'm going to disperse this out and see what I have. If it's not wide enough, I'll put a little bit more on there. This is when you want a heat gun. I use a basic heat gun where I just trigger it up and down. That's it. I don't want all these fancy things. I want to be able to turn it off and on with one hand. This is a cheap $30 Wagner heat gun. And it'll pop your bubbles as well, but then I, I can push this around and I can add some more of the clear to it to kind of disperse it if I want. Dilute it if it's too, too thick. And that's what I'll do. Put a little bit here. If this messes up, all I have to do is push it off and put some more um, epoxy on it. That's it. Simple, guys. You can get different looks, but you really can't mess it up. Don't need a whole lot. Just a little bit to give it some character. I'll put some tiny lines here and there. That's why I like to use a pencil, because I can just put some little bitty lines if I want. If I want to use a paint stick or something wider, I can. Chop it in there. Just make it to where it's tiny little little marks and swirls. I don't want a whole lot on this. Now this right here, we'll push it around a little bit. You can go with a straight line and then push it, or you can go with this. I went a little squiggly because it's a thin, thin line. Thicker lines, a lot of times, I'll just go straight. Here's an important tip. With your veins, I'm running them this way. That's my seat. The ones going on my wall, they're running toward my wall. So I want this one, it's a ledge, I want this to go the same way. I don't want this to go this way and my bottom piece underneath it going that way. You want the veins running the same way. Some of this metallic paint wanted to to sit there in a spot, you can disperse it by hitting the gun on it, and it'll kind of separate them out. And it gives a cool little look. My vein's gonna come from here, so I'll just, I'll come here and just run it down. All right, that's more than I need, more than enough. In fact, I'm going to have to put some of it 
push some of that clear off as well. See that's way too dark? No big deal, I'll start getting it off. Just kind of blend this in. And you'll see this will disperse and get lighter. As it warms up, it'll start moving around. This is not going to look exactly like the tile. I don't want it to look like the tile. I want it to look like stone. That's basically the same design as the top. You can see right here, there's a couple of bugs that got in it. That's not a big deal because I'm going to hone it. So I really wasn't concerned about it unless they went really deep. The reason why I'm sanding this down is because I don't want that glossy look. I want it to look like marble. You see how this is really starting to come out like marble? But the edges are glossy. I'm gonna take steel wool on the edges. I don't want to, to uh, remove any of the clear on this edge. So I'm just using a double zero steel wool and just rub it all along the edges and it'll degloss it. You could have done that on the whole thing if you wanted, but I'm sanding it because I had a couple of bugs on there. And the sanding, the machine's faster. If something shows on the end, I'll sand it without hitting this edge. And that's why I rounded over these edges so you don't have a sharp edge and you don't take the, st the stuff off. That's cool. We well, see how easy that was? Honing it actually helps you because it takes out the imperfections. It makes it easier for you to cover up mistakes. Now, if you have an imperfection and you want to get that high gloss back, I show how to do that. Check out the link below. You can click it. It's in the description box. And I'll also have it on my playlist for epoxy. It will tell you how to polish epoxy back. You can get the original shine back, the high gloss, even if you had a bug or trash or a dip in it or something like that. You can fix it. Easy stuff, guys. Just follow my directions and you'll get there. If you don't mind, if you found this useful, please hit like for me. Drop a comment on me and check me out on the American Builder Show. I went to national TV now. I'm still going to have my YouTube channel, but I'm doing a lot of work with uh, the American Builder. The link is right here. Click on this and you go to his channel. Subscribe for me. I'll see you guys later.